So, let's talk about stuff. Today, while I was driving to the car wash, I was making this mental list of things I need to get done, such as car wash, groceries, organized stuff in the office. And as I was driving by buildings and streets, I started noticing a familiar pattern, lots of big boxy buildings. And that took me back to a video I watched the other day from these American family that retired early and have relocated to Portugal. By the way, very inspirational story. Their channel focuses on financial independence and early retirement, which is something I'm personally interested on. I'll put a link to their channel in the description. And I recall they made a statement that there were more self-storage buildings in America than there were McDonald's. So while I drove, I started counting. One, two, three. And between massive places where people buy, store, or dump their stuff, I could count more than 10 just on my way to the car wash. So if you thought America's problem was fast food, think again, we may have found a new contender. America also has a too much stuff type of problem. Also remind me of the Hoarders TV show. If you haven't watched yet, it's a great way of traumatizing anyone that has a tendency to accumulate stuff before it gets out of hand. At least it worked with me. Now back home, I searched online the claim about self-storage versus McDonald's. And I was able to find this article from 2015 that corroborates the claim. Self-storage wins, yay! Seriously, looking around and knowing the amount of stuff I need to organize and put away, it's hard to know where to get started. Where should I begin? The thing is, I'm not a hoarder, but leaving with the bare essentials can be really more complex than expected. We live a life that is multi-angled. We have several passions, take part in lots of different social forums and activities that goes with them. I camp and backpack. Boom! Lots of camping gear. I love photography and video and have loved it for a long time. Boom! Lots of gear and all sorts of stuff that comes with it. I became a father of two kids. Guess what? Lots of things. Not to even mention the clothes for all these activities and places. But things weren't always like this. Let me take you for a walk down my memory lane. Before I got married in 2012, I used to live this normal life, living in an apartment with just enough stuff to support my lifestyle. Totally manageable. But once I got married, both of us hit reset at the same time as we knew we were going to be relocating internationally together. So instead of doing what most people do, which is finding a place to call their own, we actually hit the road and spent our honeymoon cruising South America with just the stuff that we were able to fit inside of that car. And that experience has been super life-changing. We didn't know we could actually survive with that few amount of stuff for a full month without turning wild. So you would think that stuck with us. Right, we came back different people, now we are this minimalist, we only need these 10 items to leave. <coughs> Wrong. Fast forward a little bit. We moved countries, we found our first shoebox house to call our own. But at the same time, went back to doing what almost everybody does, which is buying stuff up to the point that you start feeling that you need a bigger space for more stuff. And that happened unintentionally. We didn't even see it happening. We thought we were very frugal. We thought we were really great at just keeping to the essentials. And that worked for a while. But as things kept adding up, we started looking around and we were in a much different place. So fast forward several years. After having upscaled our place at least three times, we have a lot more room than we need. This gives the impression that you're doing just fine, that you're managing it, but in reality, you aren't. I know what I need to do which is simple, get rid of things. But I'm not entirely sure how to go about it. So what happens is I feel frustrated and defeated even before starting it. And the first thing that comes to mind is the KonMari method by Marie Kondo. You can watch her show on Netflix. It's called Tiny Up with Marie Kondo. If you're not familiar with it, it's a really cool idea and effective method to declutter the whole house in a very practical and radical way. It also offers a really simple and great guiding principle. You only keep stuff that sparks joy. Bling! 
And I would also say this is probably the best way to go about declaring things if you're going through a very big life-changing moment such as moving into with someone new or perhaps the other way around moving out of a place. Perhaps you're adding a new member to the family or even downsizing for whatever reason, but you get the gist of it. However, for me personally, there are two downsides to that method. One is it just takes a lot of time and that's quite impractical for my current situation. And the second one is I'm not going through a big life-changing moment. So chances are that <laughs> on the very next day that I get rid of most of my possessions, they actually make their way back to the Amazon cart and goes back to my front porch. And that sounds like a very stupid thing to do. For me, it leaves me with nothing, just the yet to be solved frustration. But as one of those funny coincidences life throw at us every now and then, I was talking to my buddy from work this past week and he brought up just casually that he was playing this minimalism game and he was failing miserably after a few weeks into it and we asked him what it was about, but we didn't really pay too much attention to it. So today I researched more about the game and I was pleasantly surprised when he took me to this website, which I happened to have watched a documentary from the same authors of the game a few months back, Joshua Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus, The Minimalists. Their documentary really focused on living a more meaningful life with less and helping peoples on their journeys towards the same shared goal. By the way, I'm also linking their material down below if you're interested in knowing more about it. So the game is very simple. It goes like this. Day one, you should remove one item from your house. You can trash, you can sell it, donate, upcycle, do whatever you want, but you need to remove one household item. Day two, you need to find two items, which with the previous day, that adds up to three. You go on adding an extra item every day to the point where on day 30th, it's actually 30 items. If you add all of them up, this will be adding up almost to 500 items in a single month that you got rid of. And that seemed like an impossible feat. But I also went online and saw lots of people sharing their success stories about the game, as well as some people failing miserably as well. But towards the end of the day, I think what matters the most is the effort. Because even if you get one item out of the house, that item is not coming back, it's gone. So it's better than what you have today. So I'm convinced that between the radical method of Kamari and not doing anything, which is where I am today, this should be a good compromise and a great place to start my journey back to having a manageable amount of stuff that actually supports my way of living and stop feeling overwhelmed by this feeling that I'm owned by these things. So if I were you, I would hit subscribe below, start placing my bets, leave a comment and check back on me to see if by the end of these 30 days, I'll be able to claw my life back or if I will have failed miserably. Game's on. Game's on. <laughs>